lot of girls will tell me whether it's a result of they've gotten an abortion, their um, all these relationship issues, their mother, mothers don't believe in therapy, don't believe in counseling. And so the girls are coming to me and I'm saying, you really need to get counseling. When you're telling me you've had 18 sexual partners right. at the age of 18 mm-hmm. because you got raped when you were 12 and now you decided so that I'll never get raped again, I'll just never say no. Like, that's not healthy. And you need counseling. And for them to say, but my mom doesn't believe in counseling. Like, how can you help mothers understand that there's nothing wrong with counseling? I mean, that makes me sad when you say that because you think about they just don't really have a chance to develop healthy sexuality. Mm-hmm. And, and what happens when your sexuality, your first introduction is unhealthy, right. whether it's abuse, um, whether it's inappropriate boundaries, whether it's exposure to pornography, whether it's watching, having access to your parents, um, having sex, uh, seeing things on the Internet, right. cyber sex. If you see that, that's your first introduction that is a problem. So let, let me break it down from a physiological uh, standpoint. When uh, adrenaline is running and uh, is going, and so anytime there's sexual activity, adrenaline is going to be there. A chemical called norepinephrine is produced, and that chemical is responsible for the formation and retention of memories. Okay, and if you think about the sex hormone. Uh, of oxytocin that's right. produced, the cuddling hormone, when there's any form of intimacy, even hugging or kissing longer than six seconds, produces this chemical. That's the cuddling hormone. So you have a bind to what you've seen. You have a bind to it. And so in the church world, we call that a soul tie. And so you start seeing why are girls addicted to uh, putting themselves in dangerous situations. Why are girls have a tie to older men, uh, much older than them? Right. Why is it that girls put themselves in situations where they're degraded, I mean, uh, uh, denigrated and uh, embarrassed? Why, why, why would they allow three or four guys to be with them at the same time? Right. And so we judge that, not realizing, well, how did this start? Right. And knowing that there's a, a, a neurophysiological tie to being drawn to this unhealthy sexuality. So when you think sexuality, because there, there are times in which, let, let's break it down. A lot of times there's a parent who is manipulating you and telling you, this is how I make you feel good. So the girl experiences physiological arousal. Even though she realizes something about this is not right, a lot of times that happens afterwards because the, the, the older brother, the uncle, the father, he's not saying that. He's being tender. He's being loving. He's saying, this is how I express love to you. And so she's developing this physiological arousal tied in with the formation of memory of being with an older guy. Wow. You know, even even in the opposite of that, in rape where it's forcible, you know, that's your first introduction. And so you start pairing in your mind whether you want to or not. Sex is not something that you have free will. Uh, sex is something where a guy self-gratifies himself and you don't have power. And so you find a lot of girls trying to work through it that put themselves in powerless situations hoping to master it. And, and then they get locked into this downward spiral of low self-esteem, not understanding what's going on. So we have to get our kids good counsel. It is irresponsible. It is uh, life-taking to not put your daughter in therapy knowing that she's had exposure to unhealthy sexuality, or if you see a downward spiral, her not being get it, be, her not being taken care of and, and being disrespected and not respecting and knowing her value, it's irresponsible to not allow her to go to a therapist to correct that. And I'm so glad to hear you say that as well, because I, I can't, I mean, they come to me like I'm a therapist. Like they'll ask me, can, can you be my therapist? I'm like, I'm a speaker. Like I'm not a therapist. And I've even tried to get, I've had somebody who volunteered to do free counseling. I called the mother of the daughter mm-hmm. to say, this isn't, you know, being offered. The mother never followed up. Like, I yeah. just, I, it blows my mind. It, it's, it's sad, but I, all, but I always think about a plan B. You know, that's what guidance counselors are there for. Now, I know they check schedules and they have a million things going on. But when you when you go to your guidance counseling, you don't take no for an answer. I need this counsel. Whether you bring someone in to the school base, some intervention, you have to get it from somewhere. And then we have to um, somehow set boundaries with those parents and say, hey, it's okay for you to 
uh, destroy your life. But it's not okay for you not to get the help that your daughter is requesting and asking for.